Recently, Satan is trying to create a tremendous division among the body of believers again. Y'all, this is not the first time the enemy has done a lot of this confusing stuff. It's not. But because Christianity is losing its distinction, If I had an example tonight, I would use it. I was going to use it, but it, it, it messed up. I, I brought two watermelons. I brought one watermelon that was seedless and one watermelon that had seeds. And, and a seed is just a seed, and I was going to use the watermelon, and, and um, Brother Pierre dropped it. Um, well, I got to blame somebody. You know. but, but there's a distinction between a watermelon that has seeds and one that has no seeds. Can anybody tell me the main distinction? I gave you a hint earlier. It's the seed. You see, one watermelon, you bust it open and there are black things all in it. Those are called seeds. The other, you break in it and there are spots where those black things should have been. On the outside, they look alike. If you taste them, they look alike. If you look at them, they look alike. If you put them out, flies will come around both of them just alike. Except one of them will never produce anything. Now, that was the example. I was going to give you the example, and somebody was going to get to come up and taste the difference, you know. And as a matter of fact, the one without seeds have become a little bit more popular because they are even sweeter. Because whatever they were injected by, or whatever they were injected with, whoever did the injecting, whoever it was didn't make it to East Texas yet. I know that. But whoever... <laughs> You wanted the seedless ones because, watch this now, the seedless ones were sweeter. And when you eat a watermelon, you're not eating it for the color, you're eating it for the what? Sweetness. You wanted the taste right. And if you're from the country, you, you want it sweet, but you put salt on it. I don't know what that's all about. Some of y'all don't even know about that. So, somebody had the idea that we need to make this better than what people are used to. The problem is, the seedless one is, is sweeter, it's lighter, oh, 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 and the seedless one doesn't have a season. You can get seedless ones in January. <laughs> now, let me say something to you. If you go to get a watermelon, because I've, I've had this happen before. I've been out with some friends, and we were like out at one of the pastor's conferences, and they served us watermelon. It was like January, February. And I said, I'm not eating that because I'm from Texas, man. Oh, what's wrong with these watermelons? You're from Texas. I said, they're out of season, dude. This is not watermelon season. So I don't know where they got these watermelons. But they old, and I don't know how they kept them this. <laughs> July, August is over, so that's September, October, November, December, January, February, six months. <laughs> and they were eating them, y'all, like, mom, oh, you don't know what you're missing, Russ. You don't know what you're missing, Russ. You don't know what you're missing, Russ. I'm saying, y'all don't know what y'all catching. Y'all don't know what y'all catching. I don't know what. <laughs> so with no seeds, they're sweeter. Because if Satan wants to get you to like something that's not going to profit you, make it sweeter, make it more appealing. Y'all don't understand this. I'm talking about the invasion of the body snatchers. So Jesus tells this story, right? And he's talking about this farmer who... Who, and we just read it, but I walked through it again because it's real short. It's, it's real short at normal churches. And this, this is not a normal church. So, you know, this would be about a year long. <laughs> so he tells about this guy who went and he, you know, was putting seeds on the ground and they would be wheat. And when the farmer put the seeds on the ground, and remember, this is a story that Jesus is telling. So when he told parables, people got offended sometimes because they put themselves in it. 
You're supposed to say, he told them tonight, tell them, preach it. You know, but, 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 the, but the parable makes it look like it's you. And so Jesus couldn't come out. Jesus did just not flat out come out and say to some people, uh, you fake. <laughs> Me, master? <laughs> so he would go, ah, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. No, Jesus would just tell a story. Because he was about bringing people to God. Listen to me, y'all. And when you're trying to bring people to God, you have to make God look appealing. Listen to me. You don't have a Weight Watcher seminar and put a sign up, no fat people allowed in here. That was cruel, but do you get my point? Because if your sign said no fat, people allowed than people who needed who felt obese and I'm using fat and I know that's an insulting word but it's just like the word gay you put up a sign and say no fat people allowed in here some of you are getting offended because you think you're fat what about the child or the person who thinks they're gay and we tell them no gay people allowed in here if you're ever going to lose weight, you better go where fat people go to lose weight. If you're ever going to get straight, you better go where crooked people go to get straight. And the problem is, when the body snatchers invade the church, you will start to believe you're not fat. God says, call them in so that we can change them, strengthen them. Liars, fornicators, thieves, adulterers, gamblers, call them all in. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in. He said, bring them in here. Prostitutes, hustlers, bring them in. Bring them all in. Bring your top ten. Bring them in. And if you can't bring them in and you can't inspire them, take my name off the door. When you see Jenny Craig, do you think about gaining weight? Jenny Craig, do you think about gaining weight? No. You ever go to a store and they have the little Weight Watchers window when you go to the freezer part and you open up and they have little Weight Watcher dinners? I don't, but y'all understand. The, the, the distinction says you're trying to do something about the current condition. Jesus said he planted the seeds. But, but when he wasn't watching, when he fell asleep, because we all get tired, y'all. We all have those moments where we drift. And the enemy is trying to see if you're, look at your neighbor right now. Somebody's drifting in church. I'm teaching a good word right now. You're so tired from that blessing you asked God to bless you in. Lord, bless me with a job. Bless me once. Bless me twice. Bless me coming. Bless me going. Bless me in the fields. Bless me in the city. Bless me upside my head. Bless me, bless me. I'm too blessed to be straight. And all that blessing, you've been working that blessing now, sleeping in church and missing it. Now you say, God, bless me again so I can take another nap Sunday. So we drift sometimes. We come to church sometimes and we're not on our A game. Yeah, you brought the junk from outside, inside. But okay, this is where you're to bring it to get rid of it. Understand that. It took me a minute to learn that everybody at church was not going to be in my amen corner. Because sometimes people didn't have an amen kind of day. But that does not keep me from feeding the sheep. 